one of the basic teachings of the forest tradition. He said, if you want to understand the aggregates, it's not necessary that you go following all five. All you have to do is focus on one of them, and you really get to know that one very thoroughly. And the other four are going to come running in right there. The insights you gain into the one will then apply to the other four. And often they focus on perception as the big culprit that's creating trouble in the mind. You read John Mahabu talking about his analysis of contemplation of the body. And it took him a while to realize that the problem wasn't with the body, it was with the perceptions around the body. There are times when you wanted to perceive it as attractive, and other times you wanted to perceive it as unattractive. And it had very little to do with the actual body. It was more your desire. The desire showed up in the perception. And John Cha talks about how he got started on really understanding what discernment was all about when he began to realize how arbitrary your perceptions could be. And how useful it was to call them into question. There's a passage in the canon where Venerable Ananda comes to see Venerable Sariputta and asks him, why is it that some people gain awakening, gain liberation, and others don't? And Sariputta said, it's because they don't understand perception. There are four kinds, and they don't see their perceptions in light of these four kinds. So it's useful to know what the four kinds are and how we should deal with them. He said basically there are perceptions that lead to decline, there are perceptions that lead to stability, there are perceptions that lead to distinction, and there are perceptions that lead to release, that lead to penetration. In other words, you're looking at the perceptions not in terms of just what they are in the mind, saying, well, this is the way I perceive things. You ask yourself, if I perceive things in this way, where is it going to take me? Then you realize if a, a way you have of perceiving things is pulling you down, causing you to behave in unskillful ways, you've got to abandon it. That's for the more skillful perceptions, you learn how to develop them, and then you realize there, is, there are levels of skill. that you want to build on. So you start out with the perception that lead to decline. These basically have to do with the perceptions around a wrong resolve. Perception of sensuality, in other words, seeing something as really worthy of sensual desire. Perceptions of ill will, seeing a person as being worthy of ill will. And perceptions of harmfulness, basically saying, I don't have to be responsible for this person. I don't have to be careful around this person. This person doesn't matter. Those perceptions pull you down, because you're going to act in unskillful ways based on them. So you have to do your best to counteract them. You counteract the perception of sensuality, of course, with contemplation of the body. Or if it's an object you're having sensual desire for, contemplate the drawbacks of trying to get hold of that object and hold on to it. How much you're a slave to things, if that's your attitude. In perception of ill will, you counteract with a perception of goodwill, but also perceptions of gratitude, realizing that we are in debt to one another. Or at the very least, perceptions that other people love themselves just as much as you do. If your happiness depends on their suffering, they're not going to stand for it. The same with the perception of harmfulness. That's counteracted by the principle of karma. You harm others, the harm is going to come back. Do you want that? So you can't see that other people don't matter. 
You have to take their well-being into consideration. So there's the perceptions you want to abandon. The perceptions of steadiness are that leads to stability. Those are the ones that get the mind into concentration. Once you've abandoned thoughts of sensuality, then the mind can settle down. But when it settles down, it's going to need a perception to hold it there. This is why we perceive the breath. We perceive the breath in the body. And why it's very useful to have perceptions of the breath as not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, but also the flow of energy through the body. Because as the Buddha, the Buddha says, you want to get the mind into right concentration. First you want to develop a sense of ease and fullness. And then you want that ease and fullness to spread through the body. His analogy is of a bathman working water through a pile of soap dough. Back in those days they didn't have bars of soap. They had this soap powder, which was kind of like a flour. And then you mixed it with water and you had kind of a ball of dough that you would then rub over your body. And the bathman wants to make sure that it, all the powder is moistened. There are no parts that are dry. So the Buddha sets that up as the goal for what you do is you're getting the mind in the right concentration. But he doesn't say how to get that sense of ease to spread. And John Lee is very helpful when he talks about the breath channels flowing through the body, the different centers of the breath. I was talking to someone today who found that if they could focus on the center right around the, the breastbone, everything seemed to fill the body. It was connected to everything else in the body. It's like there's a system of roads, and that's the main intersection. When something get, makes it to the intersection and the intersection feels good, then the results will spread out to the whole road system. That's one perception you keep in mind. Or when John Lee talks about the breath going down the back, down the legs, you can hold that perception in mind. And then there are levels of breath energy. You hold those perceptions in mind as well. Because those are going to help move you from just basically being stabilized to moving on to what the Buddha calls distinction, in other words, getting the mind into higher levels of concentration. One perception is seeing that as soon as you start breathing in, there is one level of breath energy that already has flown all the way through the body. Some people make the mistake thinking that if you're going to get the breath to go all the way down to the toes, you have to breathe really long to get it down the back and then down the legs. Actually, the breath. One level of the breath is very quick. As soon as you start breathing in, the whole body's already been nourished. So you can hold that perception of mind. It helps make it easier to settle down. Then you can start seeing the directed thought and evaluation that you're doing. It's kind of gross. Gross in the sense that it's burdensome, that the breath is moving around, it's moving fine, it doesn't need all this thinking. So you just hold that perception in mind. The breath will flow on its own without your having it help. You've, it's basically because you've opened the channels. You've done the work. Now what remains is the perception. As soon as you breathe in, things go welling through the body. And then you hold that perception in mind. Then you start seeing the perceptions of pleasure and the perceptions of rapture as being kind of gross. So you focus more and more on the breath. The breath gets more and more refined. They finally bring the mind to equanimity, a sense of balance, to the point where it doesn't seem like the breath is in and out breath is moving at all. The breath energy has saturated the body. Now if you're afraid of not breathing, you won't be able to maintain that state. So you need another perception that you don't need to pull the air in. Tell yourself that whatever oxygen needs you have are being met, perhaps at the skin, perhaps who knows where. You can hold in mind the perception that breath begins with inside the body anyhow. So there's nothing lacking. What you've done is you've focused on one object, i.e. the breath. 
but you've changed your relationship to it by the way you perceive it, and the way you perceive the mind, and the way you perceive the body. From there you can go even higher levels of concentration based on more and more refined perceptions. You begin to notice as everything gets very still in the body that it was the motion of the breath energy that gave you your sense of the shape of the body. Now that it's begun to calm down, the sense of the boundary between what's inside and outside the body begins to dissolve. You've got these little sensation dots, kind of like a cloud, and you realize there's space between the dots. You can focus in on the space. You can hold the perception of mind of atoms. Atoms have lots of space between them, they have lots of space inside the atoms. So think of all that space connecting up without any artificial boundaries placed on it. That perception can get you into the infinitude of space. You can hold that. You begin to think that, okay, the space that you're focused on extends through everything. It extends through the altar table, extends through the Buddha image, extends through the walls of the cellar, the floor and the ceiling of the cellar, the roof, the ground beneath you. Out beyond to, you can't even see where the boundary is. You can hold that perception of mind. And there's a question of what it is that is knowing these things. There's an awareness. You can focus on the awareness encompassing the space. Hold that perception in mind. You begin to realize there's a oneness to that perception. Well, drop the idea of the oneness. That's another perception, nothingness. You can work your way up through the different levels of, of concentration to this dimension of nothingness by changing the perception. In this case, you're changing the object of the perception, but the relationship is the same, just holding on to the perception with a sense of equanimity and steady alertness and mindfulness. Those are the perceptions that lead to distinction. The perceptions that lead to penetration, of course, are the perceptions having to do with seeing things as fabricated. There's an intentional element that goes into everything you've done. And realizing that everything that's fabricated is going to end. Sometimes the Buddha talks in terms of the three perceptions of being constantly stressed, not self. Sometimes there are lists of eleven perceptions, lists of ten perceptions. The undesirability of any world is one of them. The desirability of cessation, the desirability of dispassion. These can all get the mind to the point where it realizes that it's been able to fabricate these things based on per perception, but these things are going to fall apart. These can't be the ultimate goal. After all, we're on the noble search here. We're looking for something that doesn't die. But perceptions die. Fabrications die. The pleasure that they create is going to die. One of the images in the canon is of a tree. If the tree falls down, deteriorates. Can you say that its shadow is going to stay the same as it was originally? Well, no. The shadow follows the tree. So whatever pleasure you get out of the, these perceptions is eventually going to fall away. That's when the mind gets inclined to what might be unfabricated. Those are the perceptions that lead to penetration, that lead you finally to release. With release, you let them go, because after all, they are aggregates. You've used them, you've taken the aggregates and turned them into a path. But the important thing you realize about these aggregates is they're made for a purpose. That's what the Buddha says when he says they're fabricated. Everything fabricated has a purpose. Our problem is that our purposes all run at cross-purposes. 
they're all pretty chaotic. And we just sit there with these fabrications we've made and we think, well, that's just the way I am. And forget, well, we created them to begin with and we had a purpose at some point. So we learn how to fabricate these things with a clear, coherent purpose and a clear sense of where these different aggregates are going to take us. Because the present moment doesn't just sit in the present moment. It leans into the future. It too is for the sake of something. It's only when we get outside of space and time entirely, that's when you don't have to think about for the sake of anything anymore. When something comes up in the mind, perception, feeling, thought construct, ask yourself, what is this for? Where does this lead? And have a clear idea that it can lead in these different directions. Either it can pull you down, or it can stabilize the mind, or it can lead the mind to even more distinctive levels of stable, being stable, or it can take you to penetration and on through penetration to release. These are the potentials of these metal labels, images that we hold in mind. So learn how to appreciate that they really do make a difference, and they really do take you someplace. And do your best to fashion them in a way that takes you where you really want to go.